Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dice Tower. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Camilla. And I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're taking a look at Haunted Lands over here. Uh, in this game, you are going to be moving around a city with the surrounding forests and mountains and what have you, uh, fighting off some, some specters, spooking them off, mm -hmm. building up buildings, uh, traversing the lands, trying to get the most, I, I think they call it glory. Long ago, yeah. explorers. <laughs> Here we go. He just read the rule. Found book a new types. beautiful land, and yeah. they decided to make their first settlement. Uh -huh. yeah. However, they come to find out that these lands are haunted. Haunted. Haunted lands, haunted. you might say. Can't and therefore, they build kind of a a, a keep, you know, oh, a castle. Like a stronghold. And the, and the specters generally stay away, right? They're mm -hmm. doing their own thing out in the woods mm -hmm. and on the mountains. Yeah. Um, but times are getting desperate. <laughs> And people need to get more stuff because they're running out of stuff in the castle. Right. So they got to go out. Mm. They got to get stuff. Risk gotta it. Got to mingle with the specters. They've got to mingle with the specters. Right. That's, that's it. That's there what you're you doing. Go. All right. That that checks out. <laughs> so this game is about specter mingling. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to say that again. But I am going to show you how the game works. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. The game is going to be played over nine rounds, tracked right here. And those nine rounds are broken up into three seasons uh, right here. Uh, you are trying to get the most glory or victory points in the game. You're going to do that from appealing to these skill cards and putting your cubes up here. Uh, getting some uh, points that way. The first step in each of these is blocked right now for a three-player game. All right. So you get points that way. You'll get points from building buildings out here. And you will get points from your assignment cards if you get any of these. Uh, then you might be able to get some victory points from that as well. Whoever has the most points at the end of uh, the nine rounds and the three seasons will be the winner. Each of those rounds goes as follows. You have a player aid right here. So the round begins with a haunt phase in which the player in last place is going to roll this die here and they are going to add four specters to lands of that type, in this case forests. And they can put them anywhere they want to, as long as there isn't already a specter there or a building there. Uh, and if they run out, then they start going into the city in here in these spaces. And when this is all filled up, then the players actually all lose. Uh, so you need to be mindful of that. Once you've put out four, then we go to the yield step in which all the buildings players have yield a resource of that type, as long as they are not next to one of these specters. And this card right here reminds you of that. You could have a different card that does something slightly different, but that's the one that you should begin with. Once that's done, every player then takes a turn. And on your turn, you refer to your own player area that looks something like this at the beginning of the game. And you are going to be moving around using these tokens and flipping them face down to move around the table. Uh, some of the areas have different costs as far as traversal goes, and I'll show you that in one second. You can use this token here to get rid of the specters. Uh, and if you get rid of the specters, it takes you one of those. You will roll a die and get some goodies out of that. Based on what you end up getting, you might have some resources or some money that you get. This card changes for each season out here with the rewards going up and the difficulty to get rid of the specters going up as well. The last two token types on your player board are going to let you gather goods. Uh, if you are sitting somewhere that you could gather from, then you can flip this over and take a resource of that type. Let's say, for example, I flip over one of these and I move there. I flip over another one and I move there. I could then gather by flipping this face down and I'm going to get one grain that I would then put on my board right here. And then the last one there lets me construct and I get to build a building. So let's say I'm standing right here and I have the necessary goods. I could build one of these and put that on there, get some victory points that way and maybe some passive income during that yield. You would stand it up and put one of your colored cubes on top of it like so so that you know this is one of yours. But for now, we'll lay it down so you can see it. Now, all of these, uh, all this information is right here on the this sheet on the, on the other side of the uh, player aid. 
You have the land types right here. Traversal costs. Most of them are one, but going into a forest costs two, and climbing up a mountain costs three. What you gather when you gather, so wood, grain, stone, that sort of thing. Uh, the water you cannot step into, but you could be next to one and gather water. So from where I am, if I had one of these to flip over, I could gather water. And after you gather, by the way, you also want to go ahead and exhaust that location so that it cannot be gathered from again until we go into the next season. So each one of these can only be taken from once per season. Uh, and you've also got then the inner locations here that give you a couple of different abilities as well. So once we've all taken a turn and spent as much of this as we want to, then we go to a resting step where we take them all and flip them back. And then uh, we see if it is the end of the, uh, well, we check the ranking, which means we pass these around. Whoever's in farthest ahead gets the number one and then second and third place. Uh, and that's going to reset and change as we gain victory points right here. With the final thing needed to be done is checking uh, where this is. If we are not at the end of a season, then simply we move it to the next location, and we start again from the top with a haunt. The player in last place here on the scoring is the one who rolls and decides where they go. Everyone gets a yield, unless it's being cancelled, and then we all take turns and so on. If it is the end of the season, and we've already done three rounds that season, then a couple of other things are going to happen. You're going to remove all of these, and every player except the one in the lead, or if there are multiple players in the lead, you know, they're excluded. Everyone else behind the leader, or leaders, is going to grab this stack of cards and pick any one of them that they would like to score. And they are going to put that somewhere, and they'll be scoring that at the end of the game. Uh, that is going to happen right there. Everyone uh, of those players draws a card. It's going to happen here again, where everyone who is not in the lead draws two of those cards. You can pick whichever two you want. And at the end of the game, you're going to get victory points for this. For every one of these windmills I built, I get two victory points. Uh, and they have various different things. For every three coins, I get a point. Uh, if I have three of the same kind of good, I get three victory points, and you can repeat these things as much as you apply, you know, as many times as you can fulfill them, basically. Now, a couple of other actions I have not spoken of. I gave you the four basic actions, which are right here. Moving, uh, dismissing these, uh, specters, and then gathering, and this is for building a building. You'd flip that and put out one of these uh, buildings. But there's other actions you can do. If you're in here, uh, outside of the central tile, then you've got a couple more things you could do, and they're, they're shown right here. You could appeal to these cards. They have a cost, and if you get rid of those resources, then you go there and you gain a special ability. In this case, forests, which are normally two steps as shown here, only cost you one step if you are on this card, okay? And they each, there's, there's four for each different kind, and you randomly pick one. Uh, and then the other thing you can do there is spend money and level up the things you can do. Uh, let's say I spend 10 coins, and I can put another one of these tokens right here. It comes in exhausted like so, but I do get some victory points if I complete the row. In this case, I get four victory points for doing that, and of course I'll have more opportunities in further rounds in the game. Uh, and then if you go to the center, in the center of the board here at the castle, you can sell goods. Uh, and that card is important for that step. You can sell goods there. One, any, any one good is two coins. Two of the same in this case would be five. Three of the same would be eight. And you randomly pick one of those cards at the beginning of the game. Some of them want you to sell sets like this one. In some of them, you want to sell different things. There's only three different cards but you pick one for the entire game, and that's the one you need to deal with. So that's how you make money, and that's how you upgrade these things here. As I said, from season to season, this middle card and getting rid of the specters gets a little harder, and so you'll put that out for the second season here, uh, and then you'll put this out for the third season, and the rewards get better, but so does getting rid of the specters. That gets a lot harder. 
So there you go. That's generally what's going on at the end of those nine rounds. Figure out your scoring. If you have any of these, reveal them and score that. And whoever has the most glory is the winner of the game. As far as like good, good things, I'm going to start with a couple of positive mm -hmm. things here, and you guys feel free to jump in with any positives you had. I thought I enjoyed the... I found the game play to be pretty engaging the whole time with some annoyances, some quibbles, but I was enjoying when my turns came around, and in fact, taking a turn in this game I thought was generally interesting. I liked mm -hmm. the freedom of arranging my turn however I wanted to. Every turn feels like that efficiency puzzle, yeah. and sometimes you don't quite get it. Um, sometimes you get what you you accomplish what you want to do in the mid turn, and so then you're setting yourself up for the uh, next turn. So you are very engaged on your turn, as well as the landscape is constantly building. I'm sorry, constantly changing as people mm -hmm. are building or the haunts are coming out, and so you are your turns are very uh, tactical, where you're just adapting. And I really, uh, I think engaging is a good word for it. I will say you. I like that on my <clears> turn. <throat> Right. Oh. I'm not involved at all, except maybe planning my next turn, and that might take yeah. 30, 30, 40 seconds, maybe a little more if it's a more complicated turn. Like, you're really not involved at all on other players' turns, right. some of which could be longer, because this is one of those games where, like an action point game, you're not doing one action, then the next player do, does one action. Right. You're doing everything you can do mm -hmm. at one time. And so... I feel like maybe on other players' turns, it's not engaging. On your own turn, it's very engaging. Mm -hmm. um, and the one other thing that, that kind of was bothersome to me is that I felt like there were a significant number of turns where I had things I just could not do. Like, you know, yeah. I didn't even do a build because I can't do a build. Right. You know, it's like I can move, but why? There's really no reason to move. I can't build because I, I can't get rid of the haunt because right, I don't exactly. have the action for that. So yeah. therefore I'm wasting this action completely. Right. Yes. I've got, yeah. you know, three of these speech tokens to mingle with the haunts, but I can't get over to where the haunts are to use yeah. them. So they're just kind of wasted. So it's, it's satisfying when you can use every one of your tokens. That sure. feels like, you know, hey, I did my turn really well, efficiently. But it felt like there were a lot of turns where I wasn't. Yeah. So. And on, on that same note, I think three players is actually a sweet spot. With four, it's a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. You're sitting for three other people going through all this fun puzzling on their turn. Yeah. But for you, yeah, you're sitting there. Yeah. And then two players... The haunts are going to be very overwhelming. And speaking of that, the, the specters. I don't know. We keep saying haunts. The specters. <laughs> yeah. um, I have two big negatives. I think you guys share these negatives. So the one is those specters very quickly overwhelm the board mm -hmm. and very quickly shut down any production, which sounded really interesting yes. in concept. This idea of you gather resources, you go out there, you build, and then you have a little building. It gives you some points, some, some glory. But then that building gives you passive income at the beginning of every turn. Ooh. You're yielding. You right. yield some resources from there. You get water, you get, you know, grain, what have you. Very quickly, because there are so many specters, buildings get shut down. And you just can't keep up. You you're putting out four new specters every round of the game. You can't remove them all. You, right. You're, you're, right. You're shutting things down way and, too quickly. And there are nine rounds in the game. And there right? are nine right. rounds. So yeah, it's you're they're they're always coming out. And if they right. come out on the mountains, you have right. to use three of your movement tokens just to get there, so you can right. Right. You know what I mean? That yeah. could be a problem. And they're hard to remove. They get harder to yep. remove as yes. the game goes on. But if you, you know. don't, then you never. You're. It feels like you're building, you're building up, but never get the fruits of your labor. That's right. exactly it. You know? Right. I mean, I think I had nine buildings built, nine to nine to ten buildings built, and I got one resource the entire game in right. one of the plays. One resource the entire game mm -hmm. from those things that I built. Now I got some points out of them. Right. But then just make them points. Right. You know, you feel yes. like you're building up, and it took right. quite a bit to do that. But then you get the points, which puts you in first place, which means then you're not the one that's bringing them out. So therefore, you're going to not produce from that because they are going to put them. They're going to put them uh, yeah. where, where it works against you, well, as you should. That's the game. Mm -hmm. You know. And above and beyond that, if you don't get rid of them. You can actually all lose <laughs> in this game. <laughs> if true. they overwhelm the central tile, yeah. everyone just loses. So you have to do it. Right. And it gets harder, so you need to pay to upgrade your ability to do it. 
which railroads you. Yes. Right. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do it or you all lose. Right. That's not a good way to set up a game no. right. that, that you're telling me do whatever you want. Your turn is all these actions sequenced however you want to. Oh, by the way, if you don't do this, y'all die. Right. And it would likely to be in the last phase of the game, right. which means you've been playing for 60 or more minutes and nobody wins. Right. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? just yeah. to mean, yeah. yeah. Well, and as well as that one specific track, you can get up to six in order to, by the end of the game, when it costs sure. three, take care of two of the haints. Right. Right? Um, and if you do that, it's worth, what, two points or three points? As opposed to if you get a second build action, right. it's worth that same amount. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. like, I have to upgrade this one once or this one Four times, five mm -hmm. times, in order to get those points. Right, yeah. So this, this seems a little like imbalance there as well. Now the other big thing Let's here see, is the, bring out the elephant in the room. Uh, here. Uh, the players who are twice in the game, the players not in the lead, the player or players not in the lead, mm -hmm. uh, are going to draw one of these scoring cards. You not just draw a scoring card; you, you pick you a scoring choosing. card. You get a pick from your yeah. deck. Take a whole stack of little scoring, end game scoring cards. You pick the one that's good for you. You do that one third into the game, then two thirds into the game. Again, everyone who is not in the lead will get two of these scoring cards, and they are tremendously <laughs> powerful. Yes, it, yeah, they it's... are way too good, and so the game devolves. I, I read someone actually write it this way. I thought it was apropos. It's. It's sort of like Mario Kart, yeah. the board game. You don't want to be in the lead because no. you're going to take a shell to the face. Mm. You're up, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. And this game is all shells all the way down. <laughs> it is so bad to be leading. Right. You have, you don't get any end game scoring. Nope. Any. None. If you stay in the lead the entire game, your score mm -hmm. is on the board. There it is. Secret. You get yeah. no end game scoring. You will never be the one who rolls the die and places the specters out. Which means all your buildings get shut down. Yes, mm -hmm. so if you're in the lead, they're coming for you. Yeah. yeah. Being in the lead in this game sucks. Yes, right. you're incentivized to get as close to the leader as you can without going over, right? Which it's almost is like not, the price is right. Yeah. Which is not the way to play a game, no, you know? Not. It's not. I don't want to... Yeah, I don't think a game should incentivize you to be second for most of the game. Be like, oh, you got a point? Okay, fine, I can get one now. Mm -hmm. Or you jumped up three? I'll sneak in with one or two, but I'm mm -hmm. always behind you. Right. I want to make sure I get these passive bonuses. Right. Right. They're so good. The, the catch-up mechanism in this game is incredibly strong, yep. and there's two catch-up mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Well, the the it's not even that the, the catch-up mechanism is strong, it's that the catch-up mechanism seems like it actively pu punishes the leader. It does. Right. So it doesn't just help the person you in last catch up. It actually holds the one in front back and to a significant point as well. I mean, just a disproportionate amount. I mean, I think in, in one of the plays, you know, when we were in together, it was, I was, what, 12 points ahead? by the end of the game, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I think that's enough that I can overcome. And okay, to give perspective, we're talking about a 30 point game. Yeah. I'm 12 points ahead. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, approaching a half good, of the score, yeah, so that good, should be enough. Yeah. And it wasn't, because mm -hmm. those cards were 19 points yeah. of end game scoring for right. the last player, the last place. Right. That's insane, and that's it, just, right. And Nobody a, feels uh, good in that situation. <laughs> right. On a basic design <laughs> like, level, those cards are too powerful. But even the way they implement them is completely backward. So you said it happens twice. Mm -hmm. The first time it happens, you get one card. Yeah. Right? And it's earlier in the game, so you have less information of what you've done and what you may want to be doing. Right? Yeah. So you pick the card that at that point maybe is best for you. Right. Then, much closer to the end of the game, you're getting two. Right. Right. So you have more information on the board, you know what you're going to score on, basically, almost completely, right. and you get to pick two of the cards. And you have three three turns after that, right. so you have an entire round to adapt and build Absolutely. up, you know, put another That's building down good. on the water. So it makes no like, sense later in the yeah. game when you have more information to get two of those scoring cards. Right. It should be, the, if you're going to do it at all, which you should, it should be the other way around. It's just yeah. too strong, and mm -hmm. it is honestly like that. I mean, the, 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 the specters, that feels kind of bad. Having everything shut down feels kind of bad. This fake semi-cooperative thing, mm -hmm. not a great idea. But the cards as a catch-up mechanism yeah. that is 
not a catch up mechanism. It is a a, 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 a game up ender. Right. Mm -hmm. Is enough to drop this game for me yeah. significantly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this game is dropping, I think, over two points from that mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, anything else we want to talk about before we jump into the final scores here? No, I think we That's covered. the big one. Yeah. Um, we talked about a few positives, and I. This is one of those games that I would, I do want to play again, with house rules, <laughs> like immediately. immediately. Uh huh. Yeah. I will. I'm not interested in playing it anymore as is. I've seen that. I got it. I've experienced it. I'm ready to play again because I do like some things in it, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start tweaking it. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm at. I'm no game designer, but I can pull some things out at the very least. In the well, games the three and I play, <clears throat> we had, at the end of the game, we spent like five minutes, and we're like, oh, this would make the game better, this would right. make the game better, this would make the yes. game better. <clears throat> right. And right. you're not a house ruler. I hate you know? house rules. And I'm not too, very yeah. creative. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, like, I don't typically, I, I can't typically see yeah. how to change games, you know right. what I mean? And, yeah. and it's just, And we were talking then, very we were simple like, tweaks. Yeah, yeah, simple. yeah, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. take a lot, I think, to change it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is also infuriating, because yes. it's like, it's right there. Right, right. Oh, you could have just changed this one little thing, and it would have been better. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, final thoughts, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Um, it's, it's a game that, like you said, is frustrating. If, if you get a game and it's just every part of it is bad, you can just chalk that up. All right, I'm never playing that again. It's terrible. Move on. This is a game that you could see the kernels of interesting things going on, and it makes it infuriating because I don't want a house rule. Right. right. You know? I don't want This to. is the game that people are going to get off the shelf, and they're going to play with the rules as written, most people, including myself. And on those terms, it's not good. I'm right. giving it a four. Uh, I, I I can't I can't give it what I wish it was. Right. 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 Because yeah, it's the, yeah. I'm reviewing what's there in the box in those written rules, and as it's written, it's a four. I don't want to play it again. Right. Um, I mean, with the rules as written, sure I could house rule it, but you know what? There's too many other games that are good to go out of the box that I don't have to do your job for you. Right. So it's a four for me. Yeah. I'm coming in slightly higher. I'm coming in at a five. Um, I echo a lot of what you're saying. I I did enjoy my turn to turns. Um, but, I mean, the, the, like you guys said, you were in that one game. You were in the lead, and you got passed by Mike. You were the one who did the passing of mm -hmm. the leader who was commanding the whole game. Yep. I was in the middle, so I was the least affected by that happening. But that feels good for neither one of you. Right. No. It felt yeah. cheap you know I mean? to me that way. Right. It feels cheap and like, mm -hmm. oh, man, that sucks for you. And then you feel like, really? Mm -hmm. I've been over here doing really well. Or like looking at your board and seeing like, well, yeah, of course you're in last place because you have 20 resources. Well, not 20. You can't have that many. Yeah. But, you know, you have, you're have you sitting on 12 resources. Right. Right. Like you had maxed out your resources. Right. Yeah, no wonder you're and in last I was, place. I and then waiting. you <laughs> Yeah, and then I went, <laughs> you know, right. you know? Yeah. yeah, so for me... What's in here, um, I really don't want to play again. I find it to be, again, I'm going for that average 5 out of 10. Um, I don't think I have the vitriol uh, for it. it does, it's not inspiring that quite, but it is kind of a heartbreaking box. Yeah. Because, again, it's almost there. Um, I think if this game was tightened up, and they don't, I mean, just a rule book revision even. It, that was something they could change with the, not, just, not the components even, they could just kind of tweak the... The, the rules, mm -hmm. I could see it going up to a 7 even for me. Yeah. But as it is right now, it's getting a 5. Yeah. 5 out of 10. I'm right there with you with the 5. That's what I settled on. And you said you could see it going up to 7. I could see this even being like an 8 for me because it's just one of those big spectrums of game mm -hmm. where it's like, hey, this is this is how much I was enjoying parts of it. I agree. This is where I'm coming down. Significantly lower. It kind of reminds me of Monsters on Board in mm -hmm. that same way when yeah. I was like, you know, a huge spectrum of what I could rate this. But I can't, I can't go any higher than a 5 because of the frustrations um, in playing the game and just it doesn't leave you feeling good on either end right. like you said and even looking through those cards being that far ahead I thought you know hey maybe there's a chance so this isn't like a a sore loser thing this mm. is truly nobody feels good at the end of this but at the end of the day I loved what I was doing on my turn on I my love turn, that action yeah. efficiency and going out and the, the har I'm not really into the farming and the harvesting games and you know kind of more of those euro themes it kind of feels adjacent to that thematically, right. 
but in a really interesting world. And so, so many of the parts I just really like, but at the end of the game, it didn't make me feel good. And right. I, I don't right. think that I would have in anybody's position <laughs> right. at the table would feel good. So, yeah, it's, it was a huge disappointment, yeah. a huge disappointment. There we go, folks. So that is going to be Haunted Lions, the highest score being a 5 out of 10. It's clearly a miss, and I'm... I personally, I'm hoping for a second edition. I am Absolutely. too. I can see. It. I mean, again, even from a four, I can see it being doubled for me yeah. if they yeah. fix the major issues. I would jump yeah. on a second edition, yeah. right. and try again immediately. So there we go. Uh, that's going to do it for us. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Camilla. And I'm Mike Delicio. Thank you for tuning in and watch out for the specters. They'll get you. Mm -hmm. Everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games, we do top tens, we play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out Dice Tower YouTube channel.